The Star Wars films, even the bad ones, are incredible works of art and unbelievable feats of talent that quite frankly, I can't match. But I'm on a journey to learn and grow into the best graphic designer on YouTube. And today that means trying to use Photoshop to create one of those floating head posters for episode three, Revenge of the Sith, my personal favorite. Okay, so it seems like good a place as any to open up our canvas and place our logos. We can then just start cutting out our characters. I found this awesome picture of Anakin online that I had never really seen before. So I wanted to start with that and then also add those Sith anger eyes where they turn red full of hatred or whatever the fuck. I'm just going to do a quick Google search for Sith eyes and see what comes up. Oh, whoops, not that. Ah those perfect perfect so we're gonna quick just use a brush tool to mask out the areas of the eye that we don't need and then we're gonna create a new layer clipping mask that down to our sith eyeball and then we're going to paint in trying to match the shadows that we can see on his eyes from the photo then we just change the blend mode of the eyeball to lighten and there you go, Sith eyeballs. That was really easy, so I'm just gonna add one more thing. We're gonna create a new layer and switch our paintbrush to red, and then we're gonna softly paint just some red hue over his eyes to make him look really, really upset. Or high, whichever you prefer. I mean, he's not technically a Jedi anymore, so he can do what he want. He could light a spice spliff. <laughs> he could light up a spice spliff if he felt like it. Spice spliff, spice spliff, spice spliff. So I was searching through Pexels and I found this awesome volcanic eruption photo that I thought would work really good as a double for Mustafar. We just place it onto our canvas right about there. Now, if we duplicate the photo and set the top layer to linear dodge add and just mask away the flame section of the bottom layer with our brush tool, keeping the bottom layer set to normal and the top layer set to linear dodge add will allow those to overlay on top of our characters in a much more natural way essentially removing the background very quickly. Let's keep that volcano photo nice and close to Anakin, just so he doesn't forget what an awesome time he has in this movie. I feel like now is a good time to preface. I had no compositional idea what I was doing whatsoever. There were no sketches, there were no ideas. I just kind of hoped with this one that the photos would be good enough that I could just collect a bunch of them and feel the vibes as I was going. And I can feel you in the comments saying, we can tell, we can tell, we can tell. <sighs> Whatever. Something I do have a plan for though, is creating lightsabers. We've done it a million times. Let's do it one more time for the people. First, I'm going to take my pen tool and create my blade shape. I really just kind of copy the blade shape from the photo because the photos are really good this time around. So that's how I get the exact size. I saw a comment saying that my previous Attack of the Clones poster, they were too long and too big. And that's not a problem I've ever had before. So... <laughs> you can bring on <laughs> then once you have your blade shape created you go over to your layers panel and you double click on the shape layer which will bring up the properties window the best fucking window in this entire program i swear to god i use it way way more than i should either way you pop on a quick nice outer glow with the color of the saber you want and that's really it. You can add a Gaussian blur to the shape of the lightsaber if you want to kind of switch up the lightsaber style. If you're going for a Fallen Order or a Clone Wars, this is kind of where you can dial that look in. Now we just have to follow all those steps again for Mace Windu and his purple lightsaber. It says here in my script, add Sam Jackson clip. Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. Okay, so we've worked out basically the final composition that we're gonna go with, which means we can properly start lighting and color correcting our characters. It's a combination of a color balance adjustment layer and the real kicker when you have strong light sources is a colorized hue and saturation filter. So we go down to our layers panel and we click on this little half circle button you see here, which brings up your effects window. We're gonna click on hue and saturation and then right click on that layer and clipping mask it down to our character we're doing this on, in this case, Obi-Wan. Now we're going to make sure that we click this little button here that says colorize. This is the most important piece of the effect. 
So don't forget it. Then you just pull this slider all the way over to blue and play around with it until it feels right, right in your special place. What do you mean by that? Now, we're just going to create a layer mask on that hue and saturation layer and paint away the logical areas where blue wouldn't make sense. Then you repeat for every light source touching that character. The last new thing I wanted to show you before we finish this bad boy up is some of those Jedi interceptor ships from the opening of the movie. Those things are badass, and I really want to get them in this poster. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a nice image on Google. Just do a quick... Oh, whoops. Not supposed to see that again. Okay. Ah, perfect. This is perfect. Why does that keep happening? Now you open up that photo and remove those ships from the background. You can do this with the pen tool or AI is good enough at this point inside Photoshop that the select subject tool also pretty much does everything. It just needs a little cleanup and boom, it'll look like that. You can then place it onto your canvas and we need to find a nice cozy spot for these bad boys in our composition. I think flying through the lava look kind of cool, so they're just going to kind of live over here for now. And the two things I'm going to show you are how to add those like energy beam engine pulses out of the back. I'm blanking on the word. And then also some anime like motion speed lines. First, we grab our pen tool and we create some of these skinny little triangles underneath our shape layer following the perspective angle our ships are going. You can just make them any color you want. I chose white because white is the best. Pause. <laughs> and in the spirit of keeping things simple, you just finish up with a Gaussian blur like this. You can make it more complicated if you want. You can add smoke and you can kind of mask away certain things. And sometimes a gradient map really helps add some dimension if you're looking for it. But I'm tired, so we're just going to keep this one moving. Next up are those sweet, sweet, sweet anime inspired speed lines. So we just want to duplicate our ship layer like so. And we're going to add a very strong motion blur, matching the angle of the ship's trails. You know, they kind of all want to be going in the same direction. Now, like that. And once you have it, we're just going to switch the blending mode to linear dodge add per usual. And we're going to create a layer mask and we're going to paint away the front of the ship so that it's just the back of the ship that's getting the lines. You can repeat this effect as many times as you see fit, make them longer, make them shorter. You can kind of just pile these on each other eventually and mask away the parts that look bad. I'm basically finished here. So I'm just gonna speed run through this bitch so we can all get to the reveal and move on with our lives. And that's the poster. Let me know what you think of this edit down below. Did you like it? How does it compare to the previous two prequel movie posters that I've been making? I think in all honesty, Attack of the Clones is still the best one of the three with Phantom Menace being the worst one. And I'm honestly a little disappointed in myself. I don't love this one. It didn't come together 
like I was hoping it would. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. That's life. And that's just my opinion. To get through these things and to get better, you just kind of have to put it out into the world and keep it moving, keep going forward. Speaking of keeping it moving, the next video on this channel. If you've made it this far in the video, you are one of my few loyal and supportive viewers and you deserve to have some sort of say in what you see. So I want you to decide what the next video is. Option number one is I have three album covers that I've made for personal favorite albums of mine that I'd like to make a video showing you how I made them. On the other hand, option two, I just finished reading all of Invincible, as you can see, and I am obsessed. I don't want the Invincible train to be over, so I'm going back to realistified comic book covers. I'm going to pick an issue from Invincible and make it realistic. Let's see what Mark Grayson looks like. Let's see what Omni-Man looks like. I think that would be really fun. So comment down below which video you want to see. Please, on your way out, leave a like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel and tells our algorithm overlords that it should really put my face in front of more people. Thank you for watching. May the force be with you. Stay sexy. I love you.